right, looks like we've got most everybody back. Again, welcome back to the main room. We'll go ahead and get started with uh, Lieutenant Governor Pinnell. Again, I wanted to thank you all for joining us. And again, thanks uh, to our sponsor. We talked quite a bit about Shangri-La Resort up in Afton, Oklahoma. So I hope you all uh, will do them the uh, favor of dropping by and visit with them this summer. It's gonna uh, get started here real quick with Lieutenant Governor Pinnell, who has uh, done a phenomenal job as Oklahoma Secretary of Tourism and Branding. Uh, Oklahoma is always in need of good ambassadors, and boy, do we have one with Lieutenant Governor Pinnell. So, Matt, we will turn it over to you, and we look forward to your presentation. Chad, thank you. Um, uh, thank you all uh, so much. Everybody, Chad, do you hear me okay? Perfect. Uh, well, thank you for this, and thank you to the State Chamber. Um, I actually came with a few slides today. Uh, you know, you, you can't phone it in when you're sp speaking to the State Chamber, Chad. Um, That's right. you gotta, you got to bring the heat. Uh, I'm going to try to bring... Uh, uh, some some fantastic updates. Uh, I bring the good news, I hope. Uh, and before I get into these very quick slides, a little bit, many of you all probably have heard me um, uh, give presentations uh, ab about uh, what is going on <clears throat> inside the tourism industry. But here's a little bit right now, I'm, I'm looking at one of the slides, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll roll through these 2020 accomplishments, again, with COVID, uh, the, the tourism industry in, in the United States of America and really around the world uh, was the worst year, think about this, the worst year on record uh, for the tourism industry uh, with this global pandemic. I can report to you today that that was not the case in Oklahoma. Uh, we want to be a top 10 state uh, and that includes a tourism industry and as you can see here with some of the just kind of top line accomplishments, the ROI uh, that we got uh, off of many of the projects that I launched uh, at the Department of Tourism. Uh, we did launch an in-state, okay, here we go campaign. And this really points to the point of, we cannot just have one day at the state capitol talking about shopping local. You know, small business day at the capitol. And again, I wanna have small business day at the capitol, but, but what I am continually beating the drum on is it has to be 365, 24 seven. We have to tell Oklahomans why they should not be going to Eureka Springs, but why they should be keeping their sales tax dollars in Oklahoma. I've got a hundred different places. I mean, heck, a thousand different places that I can send Oklahomans and have an amazing time. And they're keeping all of their sales tax dollars inside the state. That is critical. Uh, we live or die on sales tax as a state. Uh, the second slide here, uh, this kind of shows you some of the impact. We had about 20 million visitors uh, and again, 2019, you see again, some of the marketing uh, yields, the tax revenue. I talk about ROI every single day. Uh, this, this really uh, points to one of the things that we do need to do a better job of uh, because you'll see the average length of a stay uh, is about 1.8 days. So we want day trippers, of course we do, but we really, the domino effect will start when we can get people staying in Oklahoma two to three nights. Uh, it, it, it's, it's so much more money that we're talking about and so much more sales tax revenue. Uh, so, but again, as you can see on the bottom there, we launched our OK, Here We Go campaign, uh, developed, yes, to mitigate the economic impact of COVID-19 on the tourism industry in Oklahoma. And it worked, folks. Uh, when you tell people about all the amazing things happening in Oklahoma, it turns into more people. Uh, this is our website uh, analytics that we have. Uh, we're one of the top uh, websites in the country, uh, one of the top states in the country when it, when it comes to uh, total website traffic and hits. Our, our tourism department has done a really great job of directing people to travelok.com. About 5.6 million people, total site visitors in 2020, uh, total page views over 26 million. Uh, we're in the top five. We're not just top 10, we're top five uh, when it comes to non-U.S. countries, uh, territories, uh, volume looking at, again, inside the state of Oklahoma. Uh, and by the way, we can send you all of this data. Uh, I have hundreds of pages, I assure you, of data just like this, uh, that if you were a local CVB or, or really anyone, any business that you're in, uh, I'm assuming that, that uh, you would probably like to, to see more of these demographics. The long and short of it is, we, our tourism department in Oklahoma today has more momentum than we've had in a very long time. Uh, a very long time. And, and that is critical. Again, you can go to the next slide. That's critical for all the other things that we want to do. 
certainly this is one of them. Uh, not only am I in charge of uh, your tourism industry, but I'm also in charge of branding for the state of Oklahoma. Uh, and one of the biggest frustrations that I had uh, growing up as an Oklahoman uh, was the front doors to our state. Uh, our welcome signs were halfway falling over. Uh, our welcome centers, uh, you would walk in there and you would tur immediately turn around and walk out because the bathroom facilities were in such poor shape. Uh, I want you to know, promise made, promise uh, kept on that. Uh, I talked about this a lot, uh, just campaigning for Lieutenant Governor. Uh, and in the first two years uh, of, of uh, my administration, we've been able to fix all of these things. We have brand new welcome signs uh, coming into the state. The picture that you are looking at right here uh, is the recently complete uh, completed renovation on, to, on all of our welcome centers. Why is this important? Oklahoma is the crossroads of America. We have millions and millions of people that are coming into Oklahoma and they do very few things when they cross through Oklahoma. They, they usually buy a bag of chips and a tank of gas and they go to the bathroom in our welcome centers. Uh, and we were not, again, uh, doing anything when it came to positive brand identification or branding inside of these. Well, that's all changed. These wonderful new signs that you see right here, uh, thank, thanking uh, Manhattan Construction, uh, uh, self, uh, sh uh, our, our architectural firm, Hampton Creative, uh, and Seltzer, uh, the interesting story there, I was speaking to the Broken Arrow Chamber about two years ago about how poor our bathroom facilities were in the state of Oklahoma. The, end, the, the, uh, the folks that were there with Sel uh, Seltzer that wanted to come hear me speak came up to me after I, I delivered that speech and said, we want to help. We want to help. Uh, uh, we want, because we are just as frustrated uh, with the bathroom facilities that we have. Also, if you want to stop an infectious disease uh, in this country, you probably should start with the public restrooms in the middle of the country. Uh, so that leads to, again, everything has gone touchless. You don't have to open that front door right there. All the bathroom fixtures are completely touchless. If you go to the next slide, um, please visit these. You can see it's much more open for social distancing much more focused on our tourism industry so that when people come in to our welcome centers, they're taking more information with them to get them off our roads and bridges, 20 miles, 30 miles, 40 miles down the turnpikes to spend money in your communities. Because at the end of the day, again, it's about creating more money for communities to be able to then pay for police and fire. And it may be someone crossing through the state and says, hey, Oklahoma has their act together. Oklahoma finally has their act together. I'm going to look at maybe potentially retiring here or moving my own business here. And those conversations are happening. Our Department of Commerce has many stories just like it. Next slide. Uh, this is the themed plazas. So we also put themed plazas at these welcome centers. Uh, the one in the upper left-hand corner is Miami off Route 66. Uh, we have uh, Bigfoot there. Uh, we are not passing a Bigfoot bill this session. That, that's the late breaking news, but we are going to promote Bigfoot in southeastern Oklahoma because it's a really big deal. <laughs> Anybody in southeastern Oklahoma will tell you that. Uh, and then again, of course, we have Buffalo representation and the great outdoors. Uh, we worked with our tribes uh, on these welcome centers as well. So there's tribal elements uh, throughout these welcome centers. Next slide. The other thing, again, first impressions matter, right? Uh, you all probably recognize uh, the red granite Oklahoma signs. Well, over the years, those red, uh, red rose uh, tombstones, unfortunately, as some people refer to them as, were completely covered up with grass and there was no landscaping around them. So it did look more like a tombstone. I can tell you, we have fixed every single one of those. Uh, and there were many more of them than I even thought. Uh, there was over, over 30, between 35 and 40 of these. We've lit these up with a nice blue light on it as well, an Oklahoma blue light. Now, again, is this a small thing? Well, it's a small thing that can make a big difference. Sometimes it's the smallest changes that make the biggest differences. And if you were crossing over into Oklahoma for the first time and you see that picture in the upper left-hand corner with weeds and grass uh, overgrown across a sign that says Oklahoma that's supposed to be welcoming, welcoming me to the state of Oklahoma, you're going to be very underwhelmed by whatever whatever state that is that you're crossing into, and I want you to know we've now fixed it, and we fixed it at every single one of those at, at, at every one of those markers uh, with part, partnering with ODOT on that project. That was dollars it, it, that uh, we were able to tap into at the Department of uh, of Transportation within their existing budget. 
So we did not have to go after additional dollars on that. I literally just called ODOT and said, we got to get this fixed. And they were able to help us with that project. Next slide. State parks. I certainly have to mention state parks uh, because they, again, are one of the best opportunities that we have right now in the United States uh, because everybody is social distancing. And this is really probably a key point for me to be telling you. As far as trend lines in the United States, the great outdoors and the great Oklahoma outdoors for sure are more popular than they've ever been. We had 2 million more people, 2 million more people visit our state park system last year than the year previous. Yes, a lot of that due to COVID, uh, but we are now wanting to sustain that. The only way that we are gonna sustain some of that growth is if we put brand new restaurants into these places like we've done with our Foggy Bottom restaurants. Every single one of those is seeing over a 100% increase in revenue. If we put tiny cabins in uh, our state park system, which we are doing, that is the picture in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, we're putting, uh, that is at Lake Murray that was just installed uh, about two weeks ago. And if we don't have nice bathroom facilities at our state parks, that picture that you see in the lower right-hand corner, we have 150 of those going into our state park system across the state. Because again, if you can't go to the bathroom at our state parks because they're, uh, they're that bad, then what? You're not gonna come back. If there's nowhere to eat at a state park, you're not gonna come back. So we have upgraded our state park system across the system. And you're gonna see more projects the rest of this year and the rest of next year. And you can thank your legislators for some of this because they helped us uh, get a $45 million state park bond last year, again, due to, again, the help of our state legislators to help us do this. Again, these uh, state parks in a lot of ways are the front door to all the rest of the economic development that we want. RV sales at an all time high in this country, glamping, never been more popular. People want the great outdoors if we can give it to them. But again, we weren't providing a product uh, that was good enough. Uh, and, and that has all changed. So I can get you all of those slides, but I, I kind of wanted to update you a little bit on some of those things happening inside the tourism department. And back to, again, the state chamber does as good a job. We, we cannot uh, uh, increase um, uh, people looking at the state of Oklahoma, uh, people looking at Oklahoma to, re to relocate without the state chamber. So I really want to, make again, be very uh, clear with you that what I'm talking about here, yes, all those things that I just showed you, they needed to happen. But it is the front door to all the other things that the state chamber is doing. It, it, if, if we can't get people to the state first, then they're not going to see that Oklahoma is not a dust bowl anymore. Uh, they're not going to be able to see that we are that we're not di that we are diverse. I mean, we have 12 different ecosystems in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, we are the most diverse state, arguably, in the entire country, in both our people and in our landscape. But most people in the, in the, in the world, not just in, in the United States, but in the world, don't believe that because the perception that we have unfortunately portrayed is that Oklahoma is just okay. We're just okay. Uh, and we have not invested, and it does take an investment. We've not invested in the state of Oklahoma and in marketing the state of Oklahoma as this diverse place where freedom lives. Because that to me is Oklahoma. Uh, I, I'll end my comments with, with a story that I tell all the time about Route 66, uh, because Route 66 certainly is in uh, the middle of a lot of my plans at the Department of, of, of Tourism. Why? Well, there's 400 miles of it in Oklahoma, first off. You have international tourists that love Route 66, but it also means freedom. This road means freedom to international tourists because they've told me that. I, I took a group of Czechs. There's, there is such a thing as the Czech Republic, Czech Republic Route 66 Association. Yes, there is such a thing as the Czech Republic Route 66 Association. And they have visited Oklahoma two times a year for the last 30 years. Not one year, two years, two times a year for the last 30 years. And I took them to breakfast at Ollie's in Tulsa about a year and a half ago. This was before COVID. And they were all piling out of this van. I mean, it was, I don't know, there was like 40 of them that piled out of this van. And I asked the president of this association, who also has a Route 66 radio program in the Czech Republic, I said, what is it about this road? And he goes, well, Matt, it's very simple. When we were under communist regime 30 years ago in the Czech Republic, how quickly we forget, right? 
There was no such thing as a tourist in the Czech Republic. And so when we look to America, th this mother road, this Route 66 was freedom to us. That, that when we look to America and we saw this windy road through all these small towns as the main street of America, essentially, when we saw Route 66, that was freedom. And so when we were freed from communism, the first trip that we took was to Oklahoma. Now, listen, it, it, if, if that didn't give you goosebumps, if, you, if we can't bottle up and sell freedom, <laughs> then, then we can't sell anything. And so I'm just wanting to play to our strengths. I just want to play to our strengths as a state. Uh, and that is really what that's been my directive to the staff over at our tourism department. Let's not try to create something that we're not. It, but if we just play to our strengths, our Native American heritage and history that we have, that yes, that Native American, Native Oklahoma, uh, a theme that will continue to run through, by the way, our tourism department is a very big reason why we have the millions and millions of people that visit the state of Oklahoma. Route 66, Chisholm Trail, the great Oklahoma outdoors. If we combine all of that, again, around this freedom thing that, that we can sell that most any other state can't, uh, then we will be a top 10 tourism state that then will help Chad Warmington when we have companies coming here saying, hey, I came here, you know, uh, got, a, got an RV spot in one of our state parks. I had no idea <laughs> Oklahoma was this great. Uh, that is a reason why the Imagine That theme is something that we are using, yes, with the new branding, because you've heard it a hundred times and so have I. Imagine that. I had no idea Oklahoma had, you could go whitewater rafting in downtown Oklahoma City. I had no idea uh, that Broken Bow, Oklahoma was as cool as Broken Bow, Oklahoma is. I had no idea that Carlton Landing exists. It's just like 30A down in Florida. I mean, but if we don't talk about it, if we don't talk about it, if you don't have someone from the executive branch that is in this state capital telling people that this matters, then a lot of times it's not going to be, it's not going to turn into fruition. So uh, I, I can't thank you for what you do and for being a part of the state chamber. It's a really big deal. Uh, again, we could not do it without you. And I'm not just saying that as a politician here. I, I mean it. <laughs> we, we couldn't do it without Chad and his leadership and their board and, and everybody that I'm seeing on my screen right now from across the state of Oklahoma. Uh, and I look forward to partnering with each and every one of you um, in office because I'm two years into a four year term and I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. Uh, because for us to make sure that the next generation in Oklahoma are growing up in a state that they could be proud of, proud of, it, that starts with this office. That starts with this office as the sales and marketing director for the state. So, Chad, thank you for uh, giving me the honor of addressing the state chamber, and I look forward to seeing you all in person at some point soon. Well, I just got two words to say. Preach it. That's right. That's, That's right. what we do here. You That's did. What we do here. I mean, you're bringing it. I love it. We got a couple minutes. I think, Governor, you got sure. a couple minutes to answer a couple questions. Yeah. If you have a question, feel free to throw it up in the chat, um, and that would be helpful there. Or, or you can email Scott. I think you all have that. One thing I wanted to make sure uh, Jenny Brown was asking. I think you mentioned that those slides that you had, you can share. Or there's a place if you want to get us that email, or uh, we yes. can get it out to everybody who registered. Because I know she says she would love to share those with some folks. Yeah, and, and I got to give a shout out to Jennifer Mullins. Jennifer Mullins <clears throat> is the uh, director of our promotional department inside the Department of Tourism. Uh, you know, and I, I came in like a hurricane, you know, into her office. I don't, she probably had absolutely no idea that the Lieutenant Governor was going to be all up in her business uh, <laughs> about how we're promoting the state of Oklahoma. Uh, but over the last two years, I've worked with probably Jennifer Mullins more than anybody else. Uh, and she's the one that helps put a lot of those slides together. So uh, I got to give her a shout out because she's one of these amazing state employees that no one ever hears about. Uh, and there's thousands of them uh, in, here in Oklahoma City and across the state. Uh, and we, I definitely could not do my job without Jennifer and, and uh, the rest of the staff uh, over at the Department of Tourism. All right, here's your reminder, everybody, grab a chance. we got a couple minutes for a question. We did have one question, Governor, and I thought this was a, an interesting one. How can businesses be ambassadors for Oklahoma tourism? I thought this was a good yeah. question. Yeah, well, it's a really good question. So Texas has a program that we really want. Uh, unfortunately, I, I just said the T word. Sorry, Chad. Um, yeah. uh, but that state the quarter, down there to the south the square jar. You know, it, it is doing a few good things. Uh, there are 29 million people down there, so they're doing something right. Um, uh, it, they have an ambassadorship program. Uh, and so they get people to sign up in their local counties 
that they become an ambassador for their state park or an ambassador just for their town. Um, and, and that is critical too. Listen, I'll, I'll go sell every day of the week. That's, I love doing it, but I'm one person, right? So I do need you. I, I need you going to your, your, your Lions Club, your chamber locally, um, uh, your city council locally, uh, and talking to them about, hey, why are we not talking about this asset in McAllister, Oklahoma, uh, that, that we should be promoting? Uh, because that starts to get uh, the ball rolling on, hey, what are the assets that we have that we, we haven't really pushed? And, and, you know, because McAllister started asking themselves that question, they're building a statue for Reba McIntyre. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so it, it is a very good question because it is something that you'll start seeing much more uh, information from the travel department. Our department will get you the resources to sign up for this, hopefully very soon. Great. We got Steve Hahn had a question for you, Steve. Hey, uh, thanks, Governor, for joining. And really not so much a question, just a comment. The last two weeks, I've driven to both Texas and Missouri, and I noticed those signs, and I thought about you when when I passed them, and you kind of took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, it's not, it's not landmark, it's not revolutionary, it's a detail, but as yeah. you said, details are important. And so just congratulations, well done on that. Thank you. Thanks for saying it. All right. Any other questions? Feel free to jump in here. I see my old friend Rich Cantillion. Rich, you've surely got a question. I've, I've been in many rooms where you haven't had not so much to say. So, I think that the lieutenant governor is doing a fantastic job promoting our state within our state Amen. because it starts with our own people recognizing that tourism is an industry. It's a job producer. It's a wealth producer. So we really appreciate your message along those lines. Thank you. Of course, Rich. You were a fantastic salesman for Ponca City area um, and uh, appreciate your friendship. All right, last chance before we do our door prizes here. Oh, here we go. What question is, how are we as a state gearing up for the Route 66 Centennial in a few years? Yeah, so we have, we launched the Route 66 Centennial Commission uh, two years ago. Uh, and we were the first state to have a Centennial Commission. So we uh, are, are, are working towards the centennial, but here's what you need to hear on this. I'm not planning just a birthday, one day birthday party. Uh, we've already created a 501c3 for this. We wanna be raising money now to be helping towns along Route 66 build actual infrastructure. So this is not just a birthday party and then it's over and then we move on with our lives. It, it's what, take again, taking taking this this uh, this birthday essentially uh, and playing to our strengths with it and that means over the next three to four years uh, building infrastructure all along route 66 uh, we have 400 new signs going up right now in Oklahoma uh, brand new route 66 signs you'll see those off i-40 you'll see those off the Turner Turnpike you know so that when it's an exit to Elk City that exit to Elk City will have the route 66 sign on that sign so you're going to have tourists or just people crossing through Oklahoma say, oh, hey, Route 66, and they're going to exit. We, we're already hearing those stories. That's a little thing that makes a very, very big difference. Uh, we, you have uh, fishing trail signs. Uh, you're probably seeing a lot of those because there's even more of those going up right now across the state. Uh, and that slide that I showed you at the beginning is showing we're getting $90 back for every dollar I'm spending. So a 90 to 1 ROI, I'll take any day of the week as well. Um, and so with Route 66, you're going to see a whole lot more happening uh, and sign up for our passport program, too. So we, we created a, an in-state passport with places that you can go and get a stamp. And then we mail you a little commemorative coin, the Route 66 coin. Again, it's a little thing that actually creates a big difference for those small business owners because the best emails and believe me, I get a lot of emails. Um, and, and, and the best ones that I get are for a small business owner saying, thank you for creating this passport program because I have all these people showing up wanting a stamp and then they buy something in my store. That's at the end of the day, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, and, and to Rich's point, this is a revolution. I mean, it really is about shopping local. And because of COVID, you have Americans now that have woken up to this. Uh, and there, there is good that comes out of crises sometimes. And I hope, I hope one of those good things is that every state, frankly, uh, but I'm in charge of Oklahoma, that Oklahomans say, hey, I, I'm not going. 
uh, to Eureka Springs. I'm not going to that city down there to the south of this in any of the cities down there in that state. I'm going to find one of these places that the lieutenant governor's talking about. Um, and I, Chad, I know I'm over time, but do you want me to give you, I mean, again, I, I'm a politician, so picking winners and losers is not smart for me to do, but uh, do you want me to give you a few spots for spring break? Because that is coming up. Absolutely. We'll, we'll end with that and then we'll give away some prizes from you. Okay. All right. So again, I'm picking winners and losers here. So, and I don't even know if I have this by region, but here's the first, go to travelok.com. Okay. It, it download the app. If you do not have the app, then you're not doing it right. It's a free app. Download the Travel OK app and you can build an itinerary very easily, very easily. Uh, Broken Bow, Carlton Landing. Okay, if you haven't been to Carlton Landing, this place is, is nuts. Uh, it, it's amazing what they're doing there. Um, if you're wanting to do kind of a weekend, or the Artesian in Sulphur is amazing. They've got this, and it, 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 thanks to the Chickasaw Nation in particular, uh, what they're doing in downtown Sulphur. It's one of the cutest little towns now, and the Artesian's amazing. Little Sahara, you've got to go to Little Sahara. Uh, we have state parks all across the state. We make the most money at Little Sahara. So I love Grand Lake too. Little Sahara makes money. Imagine that. Uh, go to Little Sahara State Park. It's amazing. The Mother Road Market in Tulsa uh, is, is one of the coolest new places on Route 66 in the United States of America. Uh, if you haven't been in the Mother Road Market, you got to go. OKC River Sports. I know we talk about it a lot, but I have to because it's the only place in America, in America, where now you can do snow skiing inside and whitewater rafting outside. Um, we, we take almost all the companies that we're recruiting in Oklahoma to river sports. Now, uh, I mentioned Shangri-La, the Pahuska Bartersville Ponca city trifecta that I call it, um, is off the charts right now. Uh, when it comes to, uh, tourism, we all know about the pioneer woman, uh, which by the way, is the number one question that we get at our travel information centers. And I'm no joke. Cause I've asked them all. The number one question is how do I get to the pioneer woman? Uh, which I think is, and am I going to see a tornado today? That's the second question, but we don't talk about tornadoes, but the pioneer woman, we definitely talk about, uh, black Mesa. So I think the coolest place, uh, that I've been to, and I've been everywhere in the state of Oklahoma is the bed and breakfast that I stayed in with my family in, uh, black Mesa area, um, uh, over fall break, uh, and a windstorm. Uh, went through and my kids thought they were on Mars. They, they said, this is what Mars would feel like because this dirt's blowing everywhere. You've got to go out to Western Oklahoma if, if, if to be a true Oklahoma. You've got to see the panhandle, not just Western Oklahoma, but in, we, someone mentioned Weatherford, amazing Route 66 down. You can go three more hours out there, right? Uh, to, out to the Black Mesa area and see real dinosaur tracks uh, that are right next to this bed and breakfast out there. So no state can do that. Everything that I just told you, again, picking winners, I'm going to get in trouble by someone here. Uh, I, it, it, from Little Sahara to seeing dinosaur tracks in Western Oklahoma to Beaver's Bend uh, to Medicine Park uh, outside of Lawton. I mean, it, it's just, you know, you got mountains, you got it all, but we got to talk about it. <laughs> we got to talk about it a whole lot more than we are. Uh, and I assure you, I'm going to be tenacious about that over the next couple of years. Fantastic. Governor, appreciate your enthusiasm, your energy, and thanks for being here. And uh, thank you also for the yeah the gift boxes that you all are are anxiously awaiting. This one I really want. I'll tell you, it's got some great, it's got a couple great T-shirts and a coffee mug in it. Good stuff. Yeah. And so for those of you that stuck around, don't get mad at me. I'm not the person to pick the names, but here they are at random. All right, uh, Gary Aiken, Tina Gilliland, David Oliver, Jessica Burns. Rusty Hale and Jennifer Bell, you are the fine winners, and we will get these boxes off to you. Again, thank you to our sponsor, Shangri-La, for being on here. Thank you all for taking some time to come visit with the Lieutenant Governor, and uh, we hope to see you again on another 10 and 20 when we have some other great content ahead for you. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.